Thanks for cooking in. Today, I'm gonna to be cooking a tri-tip on the only fire rotisserie for the Weber kettle. It was a great successful cook. However, stick around to the end of the video and I'll explain two possible disadvantages to using this method. But for now, let's get started. I have two Weber baskets here with a layer of unlit briquettes. I'll be using a paper towel with some cooking oil to get this fire started. I'm gonna light a small chimney of charcoal. Next, I'll pour evenly onto both baskets. and drop in the rotisserie attachment. I'm also gonna be dropping some cherry wood chunks for some extra smoky flavor. Here are my two tri-tips that I'll be cooking. For the first one, I'll be using some good old Montreal steak seasoning. Be sure to coat both sides. For my second tri-tip, I'm gonna be using some Heath Riles beef rub, which I've never used on tri-tip before, but you know it's gonna be good. When seasoned, I'll be skewering up these tri-tips. I kind of goofed here and I probably should have driven the spit rod through the center just a little bit more, you know, to avoid any flappy areas during spinning. But I'll be sure to do this on the second tri-tip. On this one, I tried driving the spit rod just a little bit more through the center, which works out better, I think. And there we have it. A quick little rub touch up and we're ready to cook. Okay, now that our kettle is up to temperature, let's place in our tri-tip. Once set, let's start spinning. Spin, spin, spin. It's a little hypnotic, isn't it? Anyway, let's cover up and start cooking. It's been about 40 minutes and let's check on our tri-tip. Okay, these appear to be done, but I would like to sear the exterior a little bit more. Let's put in the baskets in together so they sit right under the tri-tips. This will probably end up overcooking the tri-tips but I'm sure it'll be fine. One thing is for sure, these are looking mighty tasty and smelling super good. As mentioned at the top of this video, there are two disadvantages to cooking tri-tips this way. Biggest disadvantage is not being able to monitor internal temperatures as they're cooking. So it's very easy to overcook. The easy solution, albeit a very expensive one, is to buy a wireless thermometer. But due to its cost, I really have to make sure I need it before I buy it. The other disadvantage, which is purely cosmetic are the little fork holes left in the meat. It's not a big deal, but it's worth mentioning. But you know what? Who cares about presentation as long as they taste good? And these tri-tips were on point. All right, so I stared at them for way too long, so these probably overcooked. So let's remove and start slicing. If you need exact details on how to slice, I'll have a video in the description. And if it's your first time, just note that the grain changes direction on the tri-tip. You'll want to cut against it for more tender bite. Let's take the first one out and let's start slicing. This one is with the Heath Riles beef seasoning. Yeah, please excuse this super wobbly table. I have no idea what I was thinking. Now the first one's a little overcooked, but I gotta admit, it's still very, very tasty. The taste is pretty much the same as I would get with the reverse sear method, but I probably prefer reverse searing since I don't have to set up the rotisserie and I can monitor the internal temperatures without having to buy a wireless thermometer. Now let's slice the second one. This one is with the Montreal steak seasoning. Now this is closer to a medium and maybe it's all in my head or probably because I'm used to the Montreal steak seasoning, but I prefer this one over the first one. For the best tri-tip, however, I still prefer cooking on the Santa Maria grill over a wood fire. The flavor you get from cooking over a real wood fire, it's next level grilling. If you don't have a Santa Maria grill, then the reverse sear method will work beautifully. I'll explain how to reverse sear a tri-tip on this next video, so be sure to check it out. 